OpenAI triggers NVIDIA's GPU price drop. Elon Musk XAI wins big. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We're coming to the end of some fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking Space, SpaceX, Starlink, AI, Linux, all kinds of great tech stuff. Today is going to be a techie day about AI and the cost of GPUs and how NVIDIA is not really going to fare too well in the not so distant future. So I wanna get into this a little bit with you as a lot of you guys I'm sure are investing in NVIDIA and all kinds of um, AI and you wanna know what's going on. Well, this is something really big. And the folks over there at Elon Musk camp, XAI, might actually win really big if this all goes through as it seems it's going to. So I wanna get into a couple of articles I was reading and give you my commentary on it. But most importantly, I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about this? Are you someone that picks up GPUs maybe on a regular basis or maybe is in the market for a GPU and you looked at the GPU prices and you're like, what? What are you talking about? I have to pay $1,000 for a GPU? What the hell is going on here? Yeah, the reason why GPUs are so damn expensive is because all of the AI farms out there are buying all the chips. So the prices have been doing this over the last past few years. Well, that's gonna change and possibly due to OpenAI and Broadcom. And that's what we wanna get into today. So once again, down below, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about all this? If you don't wanna put anything down there, as I always say, put an emoji down here, whatever you want. At least I know you actually watched the video. That would be awesome. Also, if you enjoy the content, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be really great. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. I appreciate that. Click the notification button here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. At least that's what YouTube says, but they don't do it. Click all anyways, I would appreciate it. Also, if you wanna give back, there's a thanks button down here. Click the thanks button. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX specific content, SpaceX Starlink, well, I put together over 560 videos just for you. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. Click on this link. Go back there when you're done watching the video. A bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it is how we say the channel is about the why, not just the how, the why. Because I think the why is more important. Don't you? The article starts out by saying, OpenAI's plan to break free from NVIDIA. OpenAI is teaming up with Broadcom to produce its first proprietary AI chip starting in 2026, fueled by a massive $10 billion internal order. 10 billion guys, amazing. This isn't about selling hardware, it's about guaranteed compute capacity amid skyrocketing demands. Broadcom's explosive growth and why it matters. I love that they're getting into the why. <laughs> Broadcom just posted $5.2 billion in AI-related semiconductor revenue for Q3, expecting $6.2 billion in Q4, up 63% year over year. My God, that's an extra billion <laughs> from 5.2 to 6.2 in just one quarter. Unbelievable. Its stock is up 30% this year, while NVIDIA dipped 1% on the news. Kind of makes sense. NVIDIA is going to be seeing some problems, I think, coming soon. You'll see why in just a second. Custom AI chips are on the rise. What's tiny now will be big soon. Custom accelerators made up just 11% of the AI hardware in 2024, but could reach 15% by 2030, signaling a growing shift away from NVIDIA. Not good for NVIDIA. What's this mean for Elon Musk and XAI? XAI is currently deploying roughly 230,000 GPUs, including 30,000 GB200s, and aims to reach 50 million H100 equivalent units, with a combined spend likely in the billions. If OpenAI scales its own hardware, XAI's ability to access or negotiate GPU supply could shift dramatically. That is absolutely the case. Can you imagine? 
Can you imagine? Those prices are going to plummet, all right? Absolutely plummet. We'll get into it in just a second. The Colossus, a $7 billion AI beast. XAI's flagship supercomputer, Colossus, runs on 200,000 chips, cost an estimate of $7 billion, and draws 300 megawatts of power. That's roughly the amount of a quarter of a million households. It's the most power-hungry AI center ever built. What's at stake for NVIDIA? With hyperscalers building their own chip infrastructure, NVIDIA faces pressure not just on pricing, but on ecosystem dominance. If XAI and OpenAI shift large-scale workloads to custom silicon, NVIDIA's leveraged position may erode faster than expected. That's absolutely the case. So, what I think really interesting here is how we see a company like OpenAI, which is massive, obviously that's ChatGPT, that's Altman's company over there, Sam, and they are looking at creating their own silicon. So instead of buying NVIDIA GPUs for their farms, for their AI farms, they want to create their own silicon with Broadcom and that's exactly what they're going to do. Very, very interesting. Why are they doing this? I think it's just because of procurement. If they cannot get them fast enough and they need more of them, well, they're gonna have to build their own, right? And that's what seems to be happening here. This partnership between OpenAI and Broadcom could be a massive disruptor in the industry. Because if you think about it, if now OpenAI does not buy the majority of their GPUs from NVIDIA, getting those chips from NVIDIA and they create their own with Broadcom's help, well, NVIDIA is gonna have a lot of chips just laying around. That is huge for Elon Musk because remember, Elon's not gonna go partner with someone to go make his own chips or possibly convert one of the Tesla mega factories into a fab of any kind, right? Then he's, he's not gonna do that. It's kind of like the whole phone thing. He's not gonna start building phones unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, if all of a sudden Nvidia said, oh, we're not selling you chips anymore, well, of course he's gonna make his own. But those fabrication plants take years and years and years to make. They are not just something that just comes up like this. You add water and they spring up. They take a long time. They're highly, highly specialized, robotic, just the infrastructure is just amazing in those plants. So the thing that I do have a little bit of an issue here, and I think that this might end up being a problem even for OpenAI moving into their own silicon, which they don't talk about in any of the articles, is CUDA, C-U-D-A. Just think of CUDA as being the OS or the operating system for the NVIDIA GPUs. So basically, instead of an NVIDIA GPU, like we would use it as like a gaming card so that we can game or do 3D CAD or whatever we're gonna do with it. Well, CUDA allows the programmers to, on a low level, access using that software or that operating system to access the card in a different way. That way is for AI. Okay, using that processing power for something that it was not originally intended for. That's the reason why when we go out to buy a GPU, they're so damn expensive. Because all of those chips that are on the GPUs that we buy, those chips are not being mass produced as quickly as the big chips because the big chips are where are going to these plants where they're buying thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of chips. So on or in those fabs, those fabrication plants, they're building those more expensive chips because it's more money. You're talking some of those chips being 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 a card, in quotes, air quotes card. So that's a lot of money. Why would they fabricate chips that they can sell to you for five, 600 bucks? It would make no sense. This is why GPUs are so damn expensive right now. They're not, they're hard to come by. And this is the reason. So if this partnership between OpenAI and Broadcom 
changes everything. And now all of a sudden there's a chunk, right, of the market that has gone away for NVIDIA. Elon Musk and his companies like XAI will be able to purchase those GPUs or the chips at a lot lower price. The same thing holds true with SpaceX Starlink. People don't know this, but there is a lot of AI that goes into SpaceX Starlink and how it works or even how it doesn't work and how it actually finds satellites and moves and handshakes between satellites and figuring out which satellite is best for you. AI has a lot to do with this. Now, a lot of companies are moving to like edge AI. Edge being, let's say, AI that is on the device that you're using, maybe IoT device, maybe your phone, maybe your router, whatever. They're moving AI there instead of in a facility somewhere and then having to constantly backhaul data back and forth, right? So that's been happening. And as the chips get lower and lower, that edge technology is more, let's say, feasible, cost-effective to inject in the devices, meaning that the cost to have AI or higher grade or higher level chips in your phone, for example, is going to go down significantly. So. In my personal opinion, what we're gonna end up seeing is we're gonna see NVIDIA lose a good chunk of money if this does happen. And according to all the news, it's going to happen. In 2026 is when the first chips will start um, rolling out. And those chips, once again, will be specific to open AI. Now, Elon's gonna to have to look at this and say, you know, what are we gonna do about that? You know, should we do something similar? Or should we just continue doing what we do, what we know to do what we do best and just simply purchase those NVIDIA cards as need be or the chips as need be at a lower rate. I personally think just like him making a phone, I think he's just simply gonna purchase them cheaper and that's it and not even get involved in that specific market because as he says, there's bigger fish to fry. You can't stick your hand in everything, all right? You have to be good at a certain number of things and be, let's say, excellent at them instead of mediocre at a ton of different things, right? You gotta kind of, you know, pick your battles, so to speak. And I think just like the phones, he's picking his battles, and I think this is not going to be a battle that he is going to get involved in. That's my personal opinion. Now, how all this plays out, we really don't know. But what we do know is as of Q2 2025, when I was doing some research on this, 94% of all discrete GPUs on the market are NVIDIA, 94%. And AMD, their shares declined down to about 6% of the market, 6% with Intel basically has a negligible presence at all. They, they're, they're non-existent for the most part. So you're looking at 6% of the GPUs out there are AMDs and 94% are NVIDIA. <laughs> That's just crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. Why do you think that NVIDIA's stock prices have just been like through the roof over the last four, five, six years? If you bought NVIDIA like 10 years ago, just threw like 10 grand into it, you would probably be a millionaire today. I mean, it's just been just, it's they're making money hand over fist. But like I said, this move, for OpenAI moving towards or becoming a partner with Broadcom could really change everything, absolutely change everything. And I think what will end up happening too when it comes to Elon Musk and his procurement of the NVIDIA chips is that if there's more chips out there that are NVIDIA and now he can buy more faster, because remember, it's all about speed. They're trying to get the best AI out there, right? And who can get there first is really, really important. It's almost like who can land on the moon first? Who can land on Mars first? This type of thing. It is very important to them. So if NVIDIA can supply enough chips once OpenAI is doing their own thing with Broadcom, I think everything will be copacetic. But if Elon's going to need more chips that cannot be supplied fast enough, and we see OpenAI with Broadcom able to procure, to bring in a substantially more 
amount of chips than Elon can, I think things might be reworked a little bit. And at that point, I think he might start looking into possibly doing his own, maybe getting together with a company like Samsung or whoever to actually do the fabrication. And then he or them at XAI actually do the development. But the big but here is that NVLink, all right, is that CUDA. And when you go to a different silicon, all of your software has to be rewritten for the new silicon, for the new operating system. That is not a small task. And that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that I don't know if this is something they're going to do. Now, if you guys are Apple fans, then you know originally they had the PowerPC, which was their own, and then they moved into the Intel based. So everything that they were building on was an Intel platform until recently, in big air quotes, they moved into their own silicon again. That is the M1, M2, M3, so on and so forth, right? When they do those moves, there's a lot of software that breaks. And even as of today, there's a lot of software that's currently not supported on their Apple Silicon, on the M1, M2, M3, M4, and so on and so forth. It's not. It will work on Intel, but it won't work on the new silicon. So that is one of the things that they always have to remember is what is the operating system? What is that inner link? What is that NV link? What is the link between them? And it even comes to like memory and bandwidth and how it all is used. Is it heavily dependent on memory bandwidth? Can you manipulate the bandwidth properly? Can you use it properly? Can you squeeze it properly? You know, multi-chip connectivity or multi-chip multi interconnections are so, so important when it comes to efficiency. That's when you get into that NVLink. So are they going to be able to do it? I don't know. And when we see open AI moving towards this silicon, which is going to be developed in, let's say, collaboration with Broadcom, they're going to end up having this exact same problem that I'm telling you guys they're gonna have to rewrite code where it is now able to speak in something other than CUDA. Low level code. So they're gonna have to write their own operating system, so to speak, air quotes around that. Anyways, guys, what do you think about this? What do you think about NVIDIA stock price dumping? What do you think about NVIDIA having a lot of extra, very high-end chips laying around as of 2026? Do they start slowing down production now, now that they know that OpenAI and Broadcom will be in cahoots with each other, making their own silicon? Or do they keep ramping up production in hopes that Elon Musk, XAI, and other companies buy those high-end chips and what are they going to do with the pricing? How low is low going to be when they have a ton of these chips? How are they going to do that? Remember, Elon isn't stupid. And if he smells blood in the water, he's going after it, all right? So we will see what ends up happening with this. What say you? Do you currently own Nvidia stock or do you not? If you do, are you gonna keep it or are you not? Do you think it's gonna go up? What do you think is going to go down? What do you think about OpenAI and them making their own chip, their own silicon, like what Apple did with Broadcom? Do you think that that's beneficial? And what do you think about Elon and XAI? Is this something that they should look into or should they just keep on doing the status quo that they're doing right now and possibly procuring more NVIDIA chips, high-end chips, at cheaper prices? What makes more sense? Anyways, down below, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Anyways, don't forget to head over to my shop. Go to jcristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash shop. If there's some merch there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Hopefully through SpaceX, darling. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.